All right. So this is the next section, and I think uh, I think you'll like most of this. Um, this is section 2.3. It's on polynomial and synthetic division, and then we also cover a couple of theorems um, that that make it a little bit easier to find uh, zeros of some big ugly polynomials. So um, we're going to start off with just a quick reminder of how you do long division. So I've got two problems here. I've got 16 into 240, and I've got 16 into 250. So what we're going to do on this is just, again, be reminded of how this works, because when we do long division and synthetic division on polynomials, and particularly long division on polynomials, uh, it works uh, in a very similar way. So when you do a problem like this, if it were a very easy single-digit division problem or something like that, it's, it's not too bad. But when you've got two digits here, the first thing you do is you look at the 16, and it's not like you think, well, how many times does 16 go into 240? You kind of break it down and you do this. You think, well, how many times does 16 go into 24? Or really what you do is you think, how many times does 16 go into 2? Well, it doesn't go into 2, so we add one more digit, and we say, how many times does 16 go into 24? It goes once. And once you put a number up here, which is where the quotient is going to go, um, then we multiply, okay, kind of distribute through here, okay, I get 16. And then I go through and I subtract that. So I, once I put a number up here, I multiply it, then I subtract. So this is going to be an 8, and then I bring down the 0. So I'm kind of taking this a piece at a time. Then I look at 16, it doesn't go into 8. It does go into 80. Okay, now that in and of itself, I mean, no, most people don't have their 16 times tables multiplied. Okay, but if you think for a minute, you can uh, figure out that this goes in there five times. So we multiply 16 times 5. It happens to turn out to be 80. Again, once I write that number down there, I then subtract, and I end up with 0. Okay? So as it says up above, remember, there are four parts to a division problem. Okay? We've got the divisor, the dividend, the quotient, and the remainder. Okay? And we'll talk more about those in just a second, because each one of those parts is represented here. Okay, let's do 16, 16 into 250. If I did 16 into 250, again, I start off the same way. I think, does 16 go into 2? It doesn't. Does it go into 25? It does. It goes once. I multiply. Then I subtract. I end up with a 9 here. I bring the 0 down. So then I've got enough that I can have 16 go into 90. It goes in 5 times. Again, write the number here. Multiply by the 16. That's an 80. Then I go ahead and I subtract, and I end up with 10. Now, there are no more digits to bring down. 16 doesn't go into 10. So if I'm doing like whole number division, I'm done right here. Okay? And then it says down below, it says, write each problem above as a mixed number. Okay? And this is how we write a mixed number. And I'm going to do this one first. The way we'd write this as a mixed number is it's going to be the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. So the quotient on this one is right here. That thing that we wrote up above, that's the quotient. So the quotient is 15. And then I add the remainder, which is 10, over the divisor. The divisor, what we're dividing by, is 16. So that's physically how we'd represent 250 divided by 16. That's the same thing. Okay. The way we normally write this is we write this as 15 and then the 10 sixteenths, we reduce that to 5 eighths. That's how we'd write it. Okay. Now, if I do that on this one, I'd write uh, 15 plus the remainder, which is 0, over the divisor, which is 16. So I just write that as plain old 15. So I get a whole number here, and I get a mixed number right there. So if I've covered the quotient, 15, plus the remainder, which is 10, and the divisor, which is 16. Then the only other part left, the only other word that we used here was the dividend. This 240 is the dividend in this problem, and 250 is the dividend in this problem. Okay? All right. So what does it mean if the remainder is 0, like we had on this one right here? Well, what it means is, in this, in this chapter, it means that the divisor is a factor of the dividend. Or in other words, we say it goes in evenly. And we like it when it goes in evenly. Okay? Those are cool problems. 
Don't have to deal with this extra fraction stuff floating around, this extra division problem. Okay? Now, how many of you have done polynomial division? Raise your hand if you've done polynomial division before. Okay. A couple of you. Okay? So, um, let's write down how we, how we do this. Okay? Up here, I did 16 into 240, or 240 divided by 16. If I stacked it like this, 240 divided by 16, or wrote 240 divided by 16, that's how it would be written. So we're going to write this down in a, in a very similar way. We're going to write the divisor on the outside of the box, and then the dividend on the inside of the box. Okay? So it's going to look like this. We're going to draw, so skip a little bit of space, enough that you can write this stuff down. I'm going to write x minus 1 outside the box. And then as I write this dividend, this polynomial inside the box, I want to make sure of a couple things. I want to make sure that it's in descending order, and I want to make sure that all the powers are represented. So you'll notice that this starts out as x cubed. Then it's x squared, then x to the first, and then minus 3. So we've got all the powers represented. Now, the key to doing this correctly, I think, is making sure that you evenly space things out and keep them nice and neat. So I tend to write fairly sloppy, but when I do long division, I kind of clean things up and I make sure things are uh, spaced nice and evenly. Okay? So there's what we've got. And then here's the cool part. Just like with long division with two or three digits or however many, okay, we're going to take this just a chunk at a time. I'm going to look at the x and the 2x to the third. That's all I'm going to look at. I'm not wondering how many times does x minus 1 go into 2x cubed minus x, x squared and all that sort of stuff. I'm just looking at x and 2x cubed. And I ask myself this question. What do I multiply x by to make it a 2x cubed? Well, I definitely have to multiply by a 2. And I've only got 1x here. I need 3 of them, so I'd need to multiply by 2x squared. So everybody agree that I'd multiply x by 2x squared to make 2x cubed? Once I put a, an expression up here, I then distribute, I multiply. So when I multiply here, I get 2x cubed. When I multiply here, I get minus 2x squared. Now, notice I've got an x squared right here, so I'm going to put it right, right underneath there, minus 2x squared. And then once I put that there, I go through and I subtract. Or in other words, I change all the signs. So that's going to be a minus. And this is going to change to a plus. Everybody good there? And then I do just what I did up above. Once I get here, I went through and I subtracted. So let's figure out what I've got here. I've got 2x cubed minus 2x cubed. So that's going to be a 0. That's what we want. And then here I've got negative x squared plus 2x squared. When I combine those, I get x squared. And then I'm going to bring these other digits, if you will. I'll bring these other expressions down. So this is plus 2x and then minus 3. Any questions there? Then I do the same thing. I just bite it off one piece at a time. I look at the x, and I look at the x squared. What do I multiply x by to make it an x squared? I multiply it by an x. Now, I'm going to follow that straight up, and I'm going to put an x right there. What I mean is a positive x, so I'm going to go ahead and write the plus x there. And then I'm going to distribute. I'm going to multiply. x times x is x squared x times negative 1 is negative x. Then I go through and I subtract. I change all the signs. So that's going to change to a plus. Let's go ahead and combine these. That's 0x squared. Those go away. That's what I wanted. And then I have 2x plus 1x. That's going to be 3x. Bring that other one down. Whoops. Bring that other one down. That's still a minus 3. And again, I do the same thing over and over and over again until I get to a point when, I'm, when I need to stop, which I'll show you in just a second. What do I multiply x by to make it a 3x? I multiply it by a positive 3. So I followed that straight up. I wrote a positive 3. Once I put a number here, I distribute. So this is going to be a 3x. That's going to be a minus 3. Once I do that multiplication, I go through and I subtract. And what do I end up with? I end up with a 0. Now, I get to stop here, clearly because I've got a 0 there. But also because, is there any way I could multiply x by something to just make it a plain old 0? Well, I could multiply by a 0, okay? but then I'd just be adding a bunch of zeros. So clearly I'm done at this point. Okay? This right here is the quotient. Okay? That's the quotient. Remember, the quotient 
is the answer to a division problem. This right here is the remainder. So if I take this long polynomial right here and divide it by that polynomial, I get 2x squared plus x plus 3. Again, that right there is the answer to that division problem. Any questions? I'll slide that over. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. The next one is a little bit different, so we'll want to be careful with this. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to write a box, and I'm going to skip enough space that I can uh, write this down clearly. I'm going to write the divisor outside, so that's 5y plus 1. And then inside, I'm going to start off with 25y cubed, and then take a good look at this. What's missing? There's no x squared term. Okay. Now, I could try not writing that, but you're probably going to get messed up. What we need there is we need a placeholder for that, because we might end up with an x squared as we go through here, and we want to have a column for the x squared. So I'm going to write plus 0, sorry, y squared, okay, plus 9y, and then minus 1. And what I want you to take a look at is, notice how every, every power is represented, and notice how everything's evenly spaced. Whether there's a plus or a minus, a big fat number, or a really narrow number like a 1, Okay, everything there is evenly spaced. And if you evenly space them, the likelihood of you getting it right is much better. So let's go ahead and see what we've got here. 5y. What do I multiply 5y to make it a 25y cubed? Okay, so we're going to do 5y squared. When I put that up here, I go ahead and multiply. So I'm going to distribute through here, and I get 25y cubed. And look what I've got here. I do have a 5y squared. So good thing I've got a place to put it. There's a 5y squared. Now, you'll notice what I did here. Everybody watch, please. I didn't write that down as a plus. I'll just assume that it's positive. And the reason I don't like writing down that it's plus is when I go through and I change the signs, okay, that's easy. Okay? I just put a negative in front of it, and I've changed the sign. If I have to change the sign of this and I've written in pen or pencil, okay, I either have to erase it or I really have to scribble in a minus sign there. That's why it's easier to just, if it's positive, don't write the sign in front of it. Then when you go through and subtract, clearly you can see that that's a minus 5y squared. So here we get 0. Here we get negative 5y squared plus 9y minus 1. Now, some people don't like bringing down all of those terms. I kind of like that. I just like the uniformity of it. Again, I'm looking at the 5y and the negative 5y squared. I'm going to multiply by minus, whoops, minus y. When I multiply, I get minus 5y squared, and I get minus y. Again, I write the negative there because that's easy to change the sign. All you do is you just uh, write the plus sign. Just put that little slash there. These make a 0, okay? And here we get a 10y and minus 1. Again, I'm just looking at the 5y and the 10y. What do I multiply by? A positive 2. Follow that straight up. Put the 2. When I multiply, I end up with 10y. And I end up with, whoops, I'm just going to write a positive 2. And then I go through and I subtract. So I end up with, what's the remainder? Negative 3. Okay? So, this is the quotient, and this is the remainder. Now, to write the answer, we do the same thing as if we were writing uh, a mixed number. I write the quotient. The quotient is 5y squared minus y plus 2 plus the remainder, which is negative 3, over the divisor, which is 5y plus 1. So, what we're saying here is, if you took these two polynomials here, and you divide them, you end up with a polynomial plus a little rational expression. Okay, any questions? Okay, now raise your hand if you've seen that before. Still the same people? Okay, all right. So um, polynomial division isn't a terribly difficult thing to do. It's very tedious. Okay, It's kind of a pain in the butt. Okay, but, but getting the right answer really isn't that hard. Okay? Now, there is another technique called synthetic division. Synthetic division. Okay? 
that makes it a little bit easier, but it can only be used in some cases, and it only works if you can remember exactly how to do it. So we're going to run through three synthetic division problems and see how easy this is. This first one is a repeat of the problem up above. Okay? So we should get this answer right here. Okay? Because I'm just doing this problem again. Here's how synthetic division works. Okay? Um, some textbooks show, show a little bit different technique, but it all works the same. I like putting a little box right here. Take the opposite of this number, or take the zero from this factor, okay, which would be a positive one, and then write down just the coefficients. So I'm going to write down a 2, a negative 1, a 2, and a negative 3. Then I'm going to skip a line. I'm going to draw a horizontal line, and then in between the last two digits, I'm going to put a little dotted line like this. So that's what it needs to look like. And there, let me run through this again. Okay, is everybody watching? Okay. First of all, we make sure synthetic division only works if we have a plain old x plus or minus a number. So this is an x minus 1. So synthetic division is going to work on this. Okay. Take the opposite of this number right here, because that would be the 0 for that factor. Put it in a box. Make sure all the powers are represented and that, that it's in descending order. Remember, we've got all the powers, third, second, first, zero power. Write them here. Make sure they're nice and evenly spaced, just like we did before. Okay? Skip a line. Draw a long horizontal line that's at least as long as the two of those. And then in between the last two numbers, drop down here and draw a little vertical dotted line. If you want to make it a solid line, you can. I like the dotted one because then you could never mistake it for a one. Any questions? Raise your hand if you've seen this before. Okay, so here's how it works. You take the first number right here and you bring it straight down. When you bring that number straight down here, once the number's down on this bottom row, you multiply it by this one right here. So I'll do 1 times 2. That's a 2. And then we add. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Again, once the number's down here, I multiply it. That's a 1. Then I add. The number's down here, so I multiply, put it here. Then I add, and I get 0. Okay, now, here's what this did for us. This right here, what goes in this last little box right here that's dotted, this is the remainder. Right, a little bit smaller so I can fit that next one. This is the remainder. And this stuff right here is the quotient. So it's pretty cool when it works out to be a remainder of 0. And here's what happens. We just divided x cubed by an x. So this is the leading coefficient, but it's now 1 degree less. If I take x cubed and divide it by x, I start off with 2x squared. There's the coefficient for the x squared term. Here's the coefficient for the x term. And here's the constant at the end. So I get 2x squared plus x plus 3. Now, I'm going to make this a uh, little bit smaller, slide that up. Isn't that the same answer? Whoops. Same answer we got before, right? Quite a bit easier, though, isn't it? Okay, but again, synthetic division only works in certain cases, and it only works if you remember how to do it right. So, am I going to be able to do this one using synthetic division? Yes, I am. Why? Because we're dividing by what? X plus or minus a number. So I'm going to take the opposite of that number and put it in a box. So I'm going to put a negative 3 here. Okay. Then I'm going to make sure that all of the powers are represented. Uh-oh. This uh, freaking out on me. Good. I'm going to make sure all the powers are represented. Notice that we're missing an x squared, so I'm going to put a 2 for the x cubed, a 0 for the x squared, a 1 for... Oops. Nope. Other way around. We're missing an x, aren't we? Skip a line. Dotted line in between the last two. Everybody got that? Okay. Any questions? Okay. Bring down... Multiply, that's going to be negative 6. Add, that's negative 5. That's going to be a 15. 
that's going to be a 15, and this is going to be a negative 45, and then I get a negative 48. So this is the remainder, and this is the quotient. So here's how we write the answer. If you were to do this division problem, this starts off as x squared. So this is going to be 2x squared minus 5x plus 15. Whoops, plus 15. And then plus the remainder of negative 48 over the divisor of x plus 3. And that right there is the answer. Any questions? Okay, everybody look, please. Okay, some people like writing this as minus 48 over x plus 3. Okay, I like writing it plus the remainder over the divisor because then you can look at it and you can tell exactly what the remainder was. It doesn't matter. Either way is fine. I'd take either way. Okay, any questions? Okay, can this one be done using synthetic division? Yep. Opposite of that number in the box. So we're going to put a negative 4 in the box. We're then going to make sure all the powers are represented. So there's 1x to the 4th, no x cubes, minus 17x squared, no x's, and then 16 for a constant. Okay, what are we hoping for here in the remainder box? We're hoping for 0. Let's see what happens. So bring down, multiply, so that's negative 4. That's a negative 4. That's a 16. That's a negative 1. That's a 4, that's a 4, and that is a negative 16, so we end up with a 0. So this right here is a quotient, okay? And sometimes we call this the depressed polynomial, because if it started out as x to the 4th, and now what's it going to start out as? x cubed minus 4x squared. We could call it a depressed polynomial because it got busted down 1 degree, okay? So there's the quotient. So when you divide these two polynomials, you get that polynomial right there. Okay, are there any questions? Sure? Okay, so a couple of questions. It says, which of the problems above is the divisor a factor of the dividend? Okay, so let's identify that. On example two, on which one of these is the divisor a factor of the dividend? Which ones? A and C. Those two. Okay? And the way you can tell is the remainder is zero. That means it went in evenly. Okay? And then it says, use a graphing calculator to show that your answer to part B above is correct. Okay? So on this one, we had an answer of A and C. Those were both uh, went in evenly. The divisor was a factor of the dividend. Grab your graphing calculator, and here's what I want you to do. Any ideas on how we could check to make sure that these two expressions are the same? Okay, well, this is the, the cool thing about the graphing calculator. Both of those expressions are very complicated to graph. We're actually going to learn how to graph some stuff like this uh, later on in the chapter. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. Let's put this problem in Y1. So let's start with a set of parentheses. So this is going to be 2x cubed plus x squared minus 3. Close the parentheses and then divide by. You have to use parentheses on the bottoms to make sure that that's... Uh, the whole denominator that it's going to divide by all of that. And then what could we put in y2? Let's put our answer. Let's put 2x squared minus 5x plus 15 and then plus the remainder negative 48 divided by the divisor and again I need parentheses here divided by x plus 3. Now, if th those two things are equal, what should happen when we look at the graphs? They should be exactly the same graph. So I'm going to hit zoom, and I'm going to hit zoom 6, just the standard window, and we'll take a look at this. Looks the same. Did anything else pop up? 
it didn't, but I'm just going to double check and make sure. Maybe it did something weird if I zoom out just a little bit. So I'm going to hit zoom three and hit enter. Okay, and I don't see anything weird cropping up over here or over here. So I'm going to hit uh, zoom six again, have that graph it. The way you can tell whether or not you got it right is graph the original problem and graph what you think is the quotient. And if it's exactly the same graph, then you've got the right answer. Okay? So I'm going to paste that in here. Oops, maybe I didn't. Well, we'll just uh, we'll leave it. I'll grab that and put it in some other ones. Okay, so let's take a look at the end of this page, and then we'll flip over to the back side and look at some interesting stuff. It says, can these problems be done using synthetic division? So can this one be done using synthetic division? Yes, it can. Does it look like a pain in the butt? Yeah, let's take a look at what happens if we do this problem. You can do synthetic division with a fraction. Um, I would put negative one-third here. Make sure all the powers are represented. So that's going to be a 3, a 1. Careful there. There's going to be a 0, a minus 3, and a positive 1. Now, if they make up problems like this, let's just check and see. This is kind of cool because when I bring a 3 down and I multiply it by a third, I get a negative 1. That's a 0. Multiplying, I get a 0. That's a 0. Multiplying, I get a 0. I get a negative 3 here. And then I get a, get a positive 1. So the remainder would be 2. So I'd have 3x to the third minus 3 plus 2 over x plus 1 third. Oops, make that look like a 1 third. So on that one, it turns out to be not too big a pain in the butt. Can you do this one using synthetic division? You can't. Okay, here's the big problem. The big problem there is it only works if you've got an x plus or minus a number. So the answer there is no. Let's take a look at this one. Could you do this one using synthetic division? It's got a number in front of the x, so the initial answer is no, you can't. If you really wanted to, you could take this one and divide it by 4 and get x plus 5 fourths. If you divide that one by 4, you'd have to divide this one by 4, and you'd get x to the third minus 7 fourths x minus 11 fourths x, x squared, and then plus 5 fourths. Okay? Um, not worth it. Okay? You could do it, but it's really not worth it. Okay, if you really want to do go through and do a problem like that, you can, but it's usually not worth it. You're better off doing long division. Okay, besides that, you'd have to remember how to um, reverse that dividing the top and bottom. Okay, all right. So now we're going to talk about some other nice, useful uh, things that can come from using this type of division. So the question here is: Is x minus two a factor of this polynomial right here? Well, we don't know initially, but how could we find out? We could try and factor it. What else could we do? Do long division and see if the remainder is zero, or which is easier, long division or synthetic division? Synthetic division, and can we do this one using synthetic division? We can. So all we'd have to do is put a 2 in the box. 1, negative 4, 8, negative 16. Let's make sure that doesn't look like a negative 48. What we're hoping for is a 0. Because if it's a 0, then we know it's a factor. So we'll bring that down. That's a negative 2. That's a negative 4. That's a 4. That's an 8. That's a negative 8. That's a negative 16, 0. So what's the answer here? Yes. And we can tell because the remainder is 0. Okay, now. We're going to talk about a couple of different theorems. Okay, now remember what a theorem is. A theorem is a mathematical statement usually that's been proven to be true. So we know this is an actual mathematical fact. Okay? So this is called the remainder theorem. And the remainder theorem provides another way to find the 
oddly enough, remainder of a division problem. And here's what the remainder theorem says. The remainder theorem says, if a polynomial is divided by x minus k, so if we divide by this nice linear factor like we've been talking about, then the remainder is f of k. Or if we put it another way, if we plug in k, then the value of the function is the remainder. So if you divide by the polynomial, whatever the remainder is, that is the function value at that point. Seems a little bit weird, but here's what we want to do. I'm going to show this a couple of different ways. Okay. So this says we can use synthetic division to evaluate a polynomial. So we don't have to plug a number in and square it or cube it or raise it to the 8th power, times it, and then add and subtract all those numbers and stuff like that. Okay. If we want to find out what the factors are, and we hope that when we divide, we end up with a 0. Okay. What we want is we want a function value of 0. We want the remainder to be, z be 0. And this says that the function value is the same as the remainder. Well, if the remainder is 0, then the function value is 0. And what do we know about a graph if the function value is 0? Where is the graph? What's it on? It's on the x-axis. Okay. So what does it mean about the graph? If the function value is 0, it means it's on the x-axis, which is what we've been graphing for a while. Okay. So if we take that polynomial, we want to find f of 2 using synthetic division. So we put a 2 in the box. We put a 1, a negative 4, a 0, and a negative 5. Bring down, multiply, add those together, multiply, add those together, multiply. So that's going to be a negative 8. This is the remainder, negative 13. So what the remainder theorem says is that f of 2 is 13. I just did that a little bit out of order. Okay. I did that using synthetic division. Let's do it using substitution. f of 2 would be 2 cubed minus 4 times 2 squared minus 5. So that's going to be 8 minus 16 minus 5, which ends up to be, lo and behold, negative 13. So f of negative, whoops, f of 2 is negative 13. So the function value, when I plug it into the polynomial, I get exactly the same thing as what the remainder is when I divide. And the last thing I want to do is I want to show how we could do this using a calculator. So I'm going to clear this off. And I'm going to go up here, and we're literally going to type this in. So we're going to type in x cubed minus 4x squared. And you'll remember we did this when we were uh, doing that uh, calculator worksheet review. So I've got this typed in there correctly. I can hit zoom 6. Can't quite see how far down it is. Okay, that doesn't really matter because what I can do is hit trace, type in the number 2, and what does it give us? Gives us a negative 13. Okay, so there we can show it a couple of different ways. Okay, any questions? So synthetic division gives us another way to find out what the value of a function is, to evaluate a function. You don't have to plug it in. And if you think about it, sometimes that would be a little bit easier, depending on how big these numbers are. Because all you do here is bring down, multiply, add. It's all multiplying and adding relatively small numbers. Okay? All right. So now we're going to talk about a different theorem. This is called the factor theorem. Okay? And the factor theorem helps us understand how zeros and x-intercepts and factors are related. 
So it's very short. Here's what it says. It says a polynomial has a factor x minus k if and only if, that's kind of a mathematical way of, of saying this is a two-way street, if and only if f of k is equal to, anybody want to take a guess at what it needs to be? Logan, it's got to be zero. Because what that means is it's on the x-axis. And if it's on the x-axis, the y value is going to be zero. That's why we call it a zero. Okay, And that's why we kind of use these interchangeably. The word zero, x-intercept, solution. We use the word root also. Okay, So this one little sentence actually means two different things. It means if x minus k is a factor, then f of k is 0. But it also goes the other way. If f of k is 0, then x minus k is a factor. So this is what it means. We can use the factors to find the zeros. And we can use the zeros to find the factors. So this is a little bit of the opposite of what we have been doing. So I've got a couple more problems left here. So let's uh, hustle and get through those. Take a look at this graph right here. And it says, find the x-intercepts on the graph. Well, that's a piece of cake. This one is at negative 2. This one is at positive 1. And this one is at 4. State the factor that would have produced each one of the zeros. We're used to taking the factors and finding the zeros. Now we're going the other way around. Well, if negative 2 is a 0, it must have corresponded to a factor of x. Notice the way that this is stated up here. x minus k. So this would be minus minus 2. This is a 1. It must have corresponded to a factor of x minus 1. And this is a 4. It must have corresponded to a factor of x minus 4. So if we listed these factors in a nice order, it would be x plus 2, x minus 1, and x plus 4. So we identified the x-intercept or the zeros. We figured out what factors must have produced each one of those x-intercepts. And then it says find a polynomial that could produce the graph. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Did I write that wrong? Yep, it's x minus 4. Thanks. Thanks for catching that. It's Monday morning, long weekend. Okay? Now, if it says find a polynomial that could produce that graph, here's what we do. We'd multiply these together. So I'd multiply those two together. So that's going to give me x squared plus x minus 2. Then I'd take that and multiply it by x minus 4. So if I distribute through here, I get x to the third minus 4x squared. When I multiply here, I get plus x squared and minus 2x. And when I multiply here and here, I get minus 2x and plus 8. So here's the polynomial. x to the third minus 3x squared minus 4x and plus 8. That would be the polynomial that would produce that graph. Okay? All right. Any questions? Okay, last problem, and this is kind of a cool problem. It says, confirm that x plus 2 and x minus 4 are factors of that big, long, ugly polynomial, and then find the remaining factors and zeros. Use the results to factor completely. This is very much like some of the problems on the assignment from 2.3, so make sure you watch and know how to do this. So here's what we do. If we're being told that x plus 2 is a factor of this long, ugly polynomial right here, that means if we divide, what should the remainder be? Better be 0. So let's put a negative 2 in the box. Make sure all the powers are represented, which they are. Write this down in a nice, neat, orderly fashion. Guys, we've got a pretty big number there. Hopefully this works out OK. This better end up being a 0. Otherwise, we've made a mistake. So this is an 8, negative 16. That's negative 30. That's positive 60. That's negative 11. This is going to be positive 22. That's going to be 12. And that's negative 24. 
So, yes, we confirmed it. Okay, now, I want to check x minus 4. I could start over with this guy right here, but if it's a factor of the whole thing, shouldn't it be a factor of the remainder here? It should be. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put positive 4 in the box, and I'm going to use these numbers again. Oops. Because really, this would be x cubed, x squared, x, and there's the plain old number there. So let's do that. We bring down. This is a 32. That's a 2. That's an 8. That's a negative 3. That's a negative 12. And lo and behold, that ends up being a 0. So that is a yes. Now, somebody tell me something cool about that guy right there. If it started at x to the fourth and I divided by an x, this would be an x to the third. What would this be? That would be squared. Okay. So here's what's left. 8x squared plus 2x minus 3. And we want the zeros. We want the solutions. What's nice about that? It's a quadratic. Do we know how to factor quadratics? And what if it didn't factor? We could use the quadratic formula. Okay, let's check and see. I'm going to multiply the two of these together. That's negative 24. Are there numbers that multiply to be negative 24 that combine to be positive 2? 6 and 4. One of them's got to be negative. It's the 4 that's going to be negative. So 8x squared plus 6x minus 4x minus 3. Let's go ahead and factor. Take out a 2x. Be left with 4x plus 3. What do I take out of here? Have to take something out. A negative 1. Be left with 4x plus 3. So I've got a 4x plus 3, and I've got a 2x minus 1. Okay, now, everybody watch, please. I'm going to change colors again. Here are the factors. The factors are x plus 2 x minus 4, those are the ones they gave us. And then we also have 4x plus 3, and I have 2x minus 1. So if I listed the zeros, what's the zero that comes from here? Negative 2 from here. Positive 4 from here. Negative three-fourths, and from here, positive one-half. So there are all four factors and all four zeros. Now, how could we confirm this on the calculator? Graph it. What would you graph? You'd graph the original one, and you'd graph this. Put f of x equals those four factors multiplied together, you should get exactly the same graph. And if you do that, you will. Okay? All right, please consider that assigned. Try and have 2.3 done tomorrow. It'll make 2.4 and 2.5 a heck of a lot easier. Okay? Thanks a lot.